<laughs> yeah, I had to hit that button to make it official because, of course, we're going to have to do post-production at some point. And uh, jazz it up for the folks that don't like to tune in for the live stream. I don't know what their problem is. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, back for his third round on the Liberty Radio Fricasseer. The Hi Yona is back <laughs> in the building. <coughs> How you doing this That's evening, right. sir? Oh, I, I got no complaints. No, nothing but gratitude. You know, I, I'm just swimming in the grace of the constant benevolence of Great Pumpkin. Shout out Great Pumpkin. Shout out Great Pumpkin. Uh, he does uh, provide. And, and you, you know, I, I can tell you that the power of Great Pumpkin continues to grow every year because literally pumpkin spice Starbucks drinks have been in the gas stations for over three weeks now. Man, it's, it's still August, Drizzle. It is August. That usually they don't start rolling that crap out until after Labor Day. What's going on? That's right. But again, the power of the great pumpkin yeah. continues to increase. I mean, it, it it's it's a trajectory even with a steeper incline than run to Satan. I'm sorry, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> so is it is it the power of the great pumpkin or is it the power of crony capitalism and, and American corporatism and just well, that ever uh, uh, encroaching overreach of the next holiday season? Cause of course you always got to get ready for the next season, right? Even though you're not even through with the one that you're in currently, cause you got to spend money in that one, but you also got to spend money in the next one too. So you gotta, you gotta be like strategic and shit. Well, well, it turns out that great pumpkin is a, a genetically modified organism. <laughs> Shocker. Shocker. I, I know, I know, folks. But uh, I, I've been assured that um, great pumpkin is um, safe and effective. So, And uh, apparently well, there's not been a great number of reported uh, sequelae events or um, adverse events, as it were. Um, and so you, you can totally trust it. Totally trust it. I, I got some good friends at the CDC, and, and they even smoke weed. It's pretty cool. Nice. It's nice to know that the, the CDC is so liberal these days. They're very liberal. Very liberal. And, and in fact, um, you know, I have it on. Well, I'm, I'm going to protect my sources, of course, as, as a journalist always should. Absolutely. Uh, shout out Gray Zone. <laughs> And no, no. What was the one? What was the one that Glenn Greenwald started? Intercept. The Intercept. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, hey, part of government. the Omidyar is, is Network. Is there a whistleblower that you need to intercept? Call the Intercept. <laughs> we'll make sure of it. <laughs> Greenwald's your man. Absolutely. <laughs> Shout out Reality Winner. Anyways, um, oh God. and that other poor kid, the the drone operator. What was his name? Daniel. Uh. What was his name? Uh, geez. Has, hasn't the Intercept pushed like three or four different uh, whistleblowers just straight into federal custody? I believe so. Uh, yeah. What are I the believe chances? They're batting a thousand. It's incredible. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are the chances, Drizzle? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, some people are just blessed with exceptional <laughs> talent. You know, and, and that's that's just all there is to it. That's that's all you can say, because, of course, we live in a merit based society. Everybody knows that. Yeah. And if you have too much merit, you're never going to succeed. As we both know, the key to success in 21st century America is failure. Mm. Fail your way to the top. Um, there's a new book coming out from Kamala Harris pretty soon. Um, that's going to explain it all with cackles. <laughs> what what is the title going to be, or should I even ask? Uh, the title is parentheses cackling parentheses. <laughs> Just cackling. <laughs> I thought it would be something like always bring knee pads. 
I, you know, honestly, imagine the dream ticket of cackle and cankle or cankle and cackle, mm. Hillary and Kamala. Ooh. And just move Biden out of the way. Well, Surely they, they wouldn't just yeah. scrap Biden for somebody else in the middle of this election season. I couldn't Newsom. imagine. What? I I just could not imagine the DNC throwing uh, P. Paul Biden off the train and getting somebody else. Well, I mean, you know, Uncle Joe, is he's starting to get a little punchy, you know. It, it's getting to the point now where they're having trouble hiding it. I mean, hell, you wrote a song about the man, or well, I, I don't know if wrote is the right word. You composed uh, an epic musical score dedicated to our our beloved president's incontinence. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, how much more obvious can you get? You know, um, the thing that continues to beguile me about that song is that uh, as much effort as I normally try to put into my music, um, that was um, really the result of mushrooms. And, you know, mushrooms helped write I Pooped on Myself um, and was able to get me to the next level of linguistics to where I pe- where I can begin naming my songs with just sounds instead of actual words, and so that song is technically called <laughs> "By Hyona," right. hence the use of the parentheses. Right, but of course, I always have to say "fart noise" because I'm I'm not fluent in that language yet. So I just have to, right. you know, fumble my way through it as, as I do pretty much uh, every single time I go on the air here on Liberty radio. So, there's uh, a beauty. There's a true inner beauty about that song though, uh, Drizzle. And that is not everyone's going to make the same fart noise. This is and true. That's okay. that's okay. You know, as our good friend singing about the rich men North of Richmond would point out, it's the diversity of our fart noises that enriches our the fabric of our nation. That's right. It takes all sizes and tones, ladies and gentlemen. It really That's does. Right. It, it, it takes a whole village of buttholes, uh, Hillary. The, the, this is really, you know, we're, we, we continue to elevate the level of the national conversation drizzle. And, and for that, I thank you. We really do. I mean, it's it's one of our missions here at Liberty Radio. It really is. Uh, well, I don't know if elevates the right word. I, that's, we'll figure that out later. Uh, there's no need to think about that now. Well, All I right. would like to think it is an elevation of sorts because we're staying at a certain altitude while we while we allow everything else to just sink lower and lower. Thus, we are mm-hmm. elevating. Yeah, we're elevating ourselves. And I guess anyone who wants to come along for the ride, which is fine. We got plenty of room. So uh, hop on in, folks. Now, oh, but breaking news, breaking news. I've got uh-oh. our other correspondent um, at the mayor of Lahaina at his house here. He's asked him again, how many children are missing? How many children's bodies have been identified in the... Uh, Terrible, uh, terrible fire there in Lahaina. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. He, he was at, escorted away by uh, Maui police. Uh, never mind, uh, Drizzle. Back to you. <laughs> well, that's a shame. We, we almost had breaking news here on Liberty Radio, folks. We were I keep trying close. to find out. I keep trying to find out, buddy. It's that they're stonewalling us. I know, I know other people are trying to find out too, and, and they're getting the same treatment. So don't, don't feel like they're just singling you out. All right. They're, they're actually doing this to everybody. Nobody's yeah. getting a straight answer out of them. And did you see what they did to my buddy from Louisville, Kentucky? Jeez, man. What's that? Lay it on me. The, that, the, the kid from Louisville, Kentucky, he just flew to Maui. Uh, what was it? Two, three days ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then the cops just kept uh, assaulting him and pushing him, knocked him down to the ground, slapping him around. Um, and like the weird who thing is he was, working for? Oh wait, I forgot. 
It never mind. He doesn't matter. He, he was an independent journalist. Fuck him. Oh. Right. <laughs> Wait a second. I, I'm an independent journalist too. Well, well, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually what the law says. Fuck you. Uh, if you, you know, are an I, independent I, journalist, I did get an offer to work for a different media organization, Drizzle, but I had to really? turn them down because I don't want to move to Marion, Kansas. Yeah, I, I'd say that's probably a, a wise decision. Uh, it, Those people least, are scary. Uh, not right now. You don't want to head out there right now. Uh, I don't. I don't think it would be a good life choice. Uh, hang, yeah. hang out, and uh, you know, just run Liberty Radio News for like six months, and then see what the landscape looks like. Then that's what I would. It say. It took me so long to get me and this little dog to Oz. I'll be damned if I'm going back to Kansas. And Oz is great, man. Oz is great. Dude, the, the lollipop kids got killer weed, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Oz, uh, you had an unscheduled, uh, what, what do we call it? An unscheduled oh. vacation? Oh, yes. Yes, my sabbatical where I was yes. doing research on the lowest of the lower cast. All right. So let's start first with what happened and how you ended up in the pokey. Right. So um, it actually begins not this Wednesday, but last Wednesday, just before uh, an epic version of... Um, a potluck, because of course we do our potlucks on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, Ten weeks straight now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had, uh, the, the Wednesday previous, I had debuted my new show, uh, Hi Yona Weeds Days, uh, to, to, you know, basically be the 53-foot trailer behind that big rig that we all love as the drizzle on Wednesday evenings. Uh, but anyway, so this last Wednesday, um, uh, let's see, let, 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 let's, let's, let's check my calendar here. Uh, so that would be Wednesday, the 16th. That's when it began. Our story begins on Wednesday, August the 16th, 2023. And so I leave out here from my studios here at Conagisti Records on the Ohio Valley outside of Huntington, West Virginia. And I go to do my normal routine of Ubering and door dashing and just general gig economy, um, joie de vivre, we'll call it. And uh, so then I'm grinding during the Wednesday night show and that's why I, I didn't do the second uh, Weeds Days until this just this past, uh, well, last night. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, I ended up working nonstop from about 2 p.m. that Wednesday on the 16th until about 11 p.m. Friday. Nonstop. Um, which is uh, more than an eight-hour shift. Um, but I, I piled up about uh, close to $400 during that stretch of about, um, God, how many hours nonstop is that? From when to when? Wednesday to 2 p.m. Thursday to 2 p.m. Friday. That would be, yeah, that's a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a lot of hours. That, that's, that may be over. 40 hours in one stretch. I'm going to say so. Yeah. Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday to Friday. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's over 48 hours nonstop. And so, uh, I got to my last, uh, what would be the last delivery of the night? Pizza, pizza, shout out little Caesars. Um, and it was about 11 PM Friday, the 18th. So I, I was in a nice little subdivision. Fences and, you know, shoulders and curbs and all that stuff. And 
it's one of those nice subdivisions where um uh like middle class families live and uh I, I really don't want to sound like the Republican debate the other night, so I'm going to be careful with my words here. Um, but uh, it's kind of a place where you'll see all the the women with their their new mom jeans doing what I like to call dry land skiing, mm-hmm. where they're walking, but they're swinging their arms like they've got ski poles. Yep. And so I call it they're they're dry land skiing through the the subdivision with their Brand new 2023 mom jeans. Yeah, those Shout are the humans of suburbia. Yeah, and uh, anyway, so I, I, I thought, you know, I'm too tired. I keep I keep having micro bursts of falling asleep at the window, uh, and you know, driving here. So I, I'm just going to pull over and take a little nap, and then when I wake up, I'll drive my happy ass all the way home. Uh, and then, of course, then I'll wake up to the tap 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 on the window and. And I look up and I'm surrounded by public servants um, with um, service pistols and everything. And uh, well, of course, it was just a wellness check that turned into a Terry stop for all of you practicing uh, attorneys out there. Uh, we do love a Terry stop, um, which that, that's one of the Supreme Court cases, uh, you know, where, where, you know, they have somehow... Um, legally legitimize the fact that they can shake you down for your papers um basically is what it means and so now let me see your idea i was like oh i'm fine you know oh oh you're checking on me well i'm fine i was just taking a nap i'm just gonna go now see here's all the doordash and uber stuff and no no uh need your id need this need that i was like well i mean uh, for for a traffic violation i mean you pulled up here and Keys are out of the ignition. I was asleep and vehicles parked. So, I mean, what, what traffic law have I broken? I mean, this isn't a no parking zone or anything. But, uh, and roll your window down and give me the idea. Well, let's speed it up here. So long story short, um, I was taken into custody. Um, I, I could go into all the particulars of everything that was done to me, but out of respect to George Floyd, I want George Floyd to really get the love and, and concern of people when it comes to being piled on pawn by um, public servants. Cause I mean, hell I'm still alive. So what should I complain about? Right. Um, but they, they uh, ended up uh, when they ran my ID, they found an eight, year old capius warrant from the wayne magisterial court in wayne county west virginia alleging if you could so imagine that eight years ago a police officer allegedly allegedly found the yona possessing marijuana i know i uh, which it's insulting to me because it claims that I was possessing 0.2 grams of marijuana. So I don't really like to talk about it because anyone that knows me would know that if, if you found me, you're going to find way more than 0.2 grams of marijuana. Just uh, give me a cup and I'll pee in it. You'll see. I should hope so. And so then once I'm launched at the jail, apparently there's been issues in West Virginia, particularly with excessive bail and excessive uh, detainment of uh, arrestees uh, without doing a bond or arraignment hearing sometimes for days. Uh, you know, like just throwing somebody in the tank and then not even arraigning them or bonding, bond hearing for like a week. And that got to be mm-hmm. such a problem. So, Apparently, they have to do that within 72 hours now in West Virginia. Once you've been booked into the jail, they have 72 hours to uh, get you to a bond hearing or the full arraignment or both. Um, And, of course, thanks to technology, you never even have to leave the jail. They just have a a special little room where you can go in, stand in front of a camera and the judge is on a screen because 
hello future time <laughs> and um welcome to the 21st century that's where shit got really fucked up for the yona you see because every single other person kept going to the bond room and then being released no bond hearing for the yona no arraignment for the yona now now for those that are paying attention i may have pointed out previously that my eight-year-old capius warrant was from Wayne County, which sounds exactly right. like Cabell County. It's easy to get Wayne and Cabell confused. Um, and so when I finally got my bond hearing, my bond hearing was in front of a magistrate for Cabell County who took my eight-year-old uh, capius warrant and transformed it into a brand new 2023 misdemeanor charge for Cabell County which allowed me to get a full cash $10,000 bond. Oh, well, lucky you. And, um, you know, I meant to ask you last week, do, do you have an extra 10 grand I could borrow? I'll give it back once I go to court. Well, it turns out I didn't need it because when my wife went to the magistrate to see if they could do 10% of 10,000, which would be, just a thousand dollars cash. I mean, who doesn't have a thousand dollars cash just laying around? I mean, well, unless you're in America. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's like over sixty percent of the population now. But go on. Right. Um, and she goes to see the magistrate in Wayne, and the magistrate in Wayne is, oh, well, I don't even think we could enforce this capious warrant because the officer that arrested Anselmo, that's me, um, eight years ago, did not put his name on there. Did not indicate that any marijuana had been taken into custody. Um, there's no evidence. There's nothing. He didn't put his name or badge number or anything on this arrest. Uh, so we don't have any way to really even prosecute this case. And furthermore, magisterial court only has jurisdiction for up to seven years. Because, see, not all states even have magistrate court anymore. Most states did away with it because a magistrate doesn't even have to have a law degree, just a high school diploma or GED. But they nice. get to be. Uh, so magisterial court is the lowest level of courts in West Virginia, for those that are unfamiliar with the uh, magistrate flex. So, um, but in this case, the magistrate judge is the good guy in Wayne County because he's like, well, I've never seen this guy. And how long has he been in the Western Regional Jail there? And Well, they've never contacted me. I've been on call the whole time. And he's like, well, let me see this thing. And so he's like, yeah, you don't have to give me any money. I'm just going to dismiss this thing altogether. This is a total flim plan. And so he signed the release paper for me to be released. Gave it to uh, my wife, who was there meeting with him. Then she goes and comes to the jail this past Monday to get me out with the paper from the signed by the judge. <coughs> and uh, that was at uh, around about 1.30 or 2 o'clock this past Monday. And that's when they got me from my uh, cell where I'd been put in the COVID um, segregation housing unit uh, where I got to enjoy a uh, a nice three-day stay in a solitary box by myself. Why did they put you in the COVID segregation unit? Oh, because I said I had not received the COVID vaccine and I refused the COVID swap. Oh, so you were just dirty automatically. Yeah. And, and you know, but, but thanks to COVID, there's all these new policies at the jails um, when it comes to doing that. And so... Um, long story short, they, they got me out of there at, uh, I mean, the booking guest called me up to the front. And so I got to drag all my mat and my orange clothes and everything up to the booking desk. All well, excited. Did they give you all a right. jumper? Did you get a uh, jumper? No, I got the two piece. I got the Bob oh. Barker, uh, textiles there with the, the, the shirt top That's the pants, fun. and the uh, orange slippers. As well as uh, I got to keep the white boxer shorts Ooh. that they issued. 
Um, and it's kind of weird because it's the only boxer shorts I have where you can't thread the pee bob through the front because it's a, you know, they're sewn on the front and the back. Unfortunately, <laughs> I guess unfortunately. to make it harder. I don't know. <laughs> so now you either have to lift up one of your um, legs and pee through one of your leg holes, or you literally okay. have to pull the boxer shorts down, which yeah. kind of defeats the whole purpose of wearing male underwear where you can keep the waistband up and just well, yeah. thread through, you know? Well, yeah, because if you like for me, because I'm a tall person, my natural inclination would be to pull them down, but then I'm a, I, I'm defenseless from behind while I'm taking a piss, right? Exactly. And that's that's exactly. like not a position you want to be in uh, when you're you're under those circumstances. I mean, and yeah, that's why male underwear and feel female underwear are constructed differently. Mm -hmm. That's right. A man is going to be able to pee and still keep that turd cutter protected. Mm -hmm. I've not seen any panties made where they can pee, but keep the waistband up. Uh, thong. Thong, you just move it to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Thong. The thong would uh, shout out Cisco. Thong, <laughs> the thong, thong, thong. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thong, thong is uh, multi use. My God, Drizzle, you're a fucking genius. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, my God. We're a team, buddy. We're a team. We, 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 we fill each other's weaknesses. Yeah, I think we do a pretty good job of that. Uh, it actually seems to work out pretty well. So, Well, well, they finally let me out. They yeah. finally let me out. They, but when, when I got to the booking desk, they've got a little chicken cage where they can lock you in just like a, like a phone booth type chicken cage while you're waiting to be released. And I got to sit in that thing for five fucking hours. Why would they do after that? After they had already received my release. Five hours I've been released and I'm just sitting in a cage at the booking desk. Right. For a five human coop. hours. <laughs> you were in a human coop. And then I get out hours. to the parking lot and my wife is like, oh my God, I've been waiting out here for five hours. Does yeah. that qualify as cruel and unusual punishment, do you think? Um, yes. Yes. I think so, too. Al Cause... Although it could have been even more cruel if uh, I would have gotten to wear the green pickle suit. <laughs> which which is for those that they fear may try to kill themselves. <laughs> the suicide smock. Ah, so now it's it's green now. Wow. The big green padded blanket that mm -hmm. Velcro's together. The pickle suit. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've seen them. Ugh. I think they're different colors in different states, or although maybe not anymore, because honestly, fortunately, I have not been behind bars uh, anywhere in the world since 97, I think. Wow. I think that was the last time. Yeah. That was the last time I got hauled in. I'll tell and you that, what, it's it's so confusing when you engage with the legal system in not just West Virginia, but Virginia. I mean, there, there's something about the Virginia and West Virginia system, the way they disambiguated jurisdiction. And and so for those who aren't aware. Um, you know, the city government and county government are separate in West Correct. Virginia and in Virginia, because that's Correct. how we do it in the old dominion. Um, and so like, if you do something wrong by the courthouse, if it's in the courthouse building itself, you'll have to deal with the county government. But if you're outside the door of the courthouse on the sidewalk. City property. Well, now you're dealing with the city government, which is entirely separate from. So, like, if you've ever looked at a map of Virginia, a good map, and, and you see all these lines carved out inside each county where the cities are. It's because the city government is completely unaffiliated with the county government. 
and reports through its own thing. They even have their own city courts, municipal courts. Mm-hmm. And then they also have magistrate court. But then there's also county district court and county circuit court. And the, the, the wonderful thing is there's enough courts to where you can constantly harass all the poor people all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some of the cities and counties, <laughs> no, check, uh, Jonah's actually right, folks. But check this out. It gets even more devious because some of the police forces of these cities and their surrounding counties have dual jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. So uh, it doesn't really matter where you are when they perceive that you're breaking the law, that they can just arrest you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to and, live in one of those places. The, the the cool thing is, which I I didn't really prepare for this, but um, we we can definitely do some follow up and we can drop some links in the show notes uh, after. Oh, the there's August no show repost. notes, man. There's there's not even. Well, I mean, uh, well, yeah, we're gonna produce this. We're gonna produce the interview. But yeah, go ahead. Um, but what uh, what what's interesting to see is the number of arrests made uh versus the number of cases prosecuted and convicted because that's where you see the disparity particularly in law enforcement with regards to virginia and west virginia there's all kinds of arrests not so many prosecutions and even fewer convictions because of course it's a team effort between the LEOs, right? Your your cop, your law enforcement officers, and then your district attorneys and your other uh, related prosecutors, who are then going to pick up from the police and then carry the case through court to try to find your ass guilty of whatever they can make up. Um, and as a general rule, uh, the DA or district attorney prosecutor's office, um, as a general rule. They either um, obstruct, invent, or withhold evidence as as basically a standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, when you look at Virginia and West Virginia, particularly in in this metric, uh, it's really amazing how few people are actually convicted of any crime of, of the many that are constantly arrested mm-hmm. in Virginia and West Virginia, because apparently the plea deals, the courts look at it and they're like, this is nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's dismissed or better yet. Why would you want a trial by jury when we can just cut a deal? Correct. I mean, we've already charged you with 15 things. 13 charges are total bogus, but Hey, 15 charges, just just plead guilty to this one charge and do three years of probation and reporting to a parole officer and pay us $3,000. And then you can go back to your job at uh, Savaro in the mall. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, They also uh, have been known to intimidate prosecution witnesses, which is, it just boggles my mind. You know, like why? Yeah, why it turns you... out our system is kind of broken. It's kind of broken. <laughs> is it? Is it though? Is it broken, or is it working exactly the way that it was designed? Well, they have fixed it. They have fixed the system. So, if you have money, it works fine. Mm. If you have money, it works fine. I mean, money talks, bullshit walks. Broke motherfucker, stay in jail. There you go. That's how. Yeah, that's that, how that has always been my experience. <laughs> and know, uh, you know, speaking what? of indictments and the court system. Oh yeah. Um, wasn't today the Donald John Trump's great um, arraignment in his Georgia? Uh, what is it? Election interference. Was indictment? it? 
Was it arraignment or arrest? Because the only thing that I heard people talking about today was a mugshot. Everybody wanted to see a mugshot. And when I hear mugshot, I'm thinking arrest because that's the only time I've ever had my picture taken by the police is when I was arrested and I was being processed and on my way to my little cage. Well, technically what he did was what is called an arraignment. And so let, let's just do a little bit of educational moments here with our audience. Um, Go for arrest it. is when um, that Bobby as our friends and dear old blighty across the pond would call them. It's when the Bobby, uh, that's a cop, um, when, when the Bobby puts the uh, irons around your wrists, what we would call handcuffs. And so the Bobby has ironed your wrists uh, and you're taking into custody and you can't move your arms away from each other anymore because they're attached with fucking chains. That's arrest. Arraignment is when they say, hey, is your name Christopher Robbins? And is your address the 100 Acre Woods? And, and is that thing over there, Eeyore, your accomplice? And that's when you say, yes, your honor. And then he says, okay, I'm charging you and Eeyore and Mr. Rabbit as co-conspirators in trying to cultivate marijuana in the 100 acre woods, at which point Christopher Robbins would have to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty for conspiracy to cultivate marijuana in the 100 acre woods, at which point Winnie the Pooh could then put up a property surety bond in order to get Christopher Robbins released from custody at the arraignment hearing. So, Technically speaking, Christopher Robbins may not even be arrested. He's just an arraignment is where you answer the judge for any charge he's accusing you of. An arraignment is just where you enter an initial plea to the accusation of the state. Christopher Robbins, you know, um, Commonwealth of Virginia versus Christopher Robbins. Case 23-666. And Christopher Robbins enters a plea of not guilty for conspiracy to cultivate marijuana with Mr. Rabbit and Eeyore at the 100 Acre Woods in Albemarle County, Virginia. Uh, and that, that would be an arraignment. And, and after the arraignment, then Christopher Robbins and Mr. Rabbit and Eeyore would sit down with you know, a good lawyer like maybe Dershowitz or something, if, if he's not busy in bed um, romping with um, Kazakh girls, shout out Borat. No, he's, um, he's too busy running cover for pedophiles. He's, he's not yeah, going to get yeah. in on any of that action. Does not yeah. want the 100 acre wood action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, they would I probably know some have to ladies see, who uh, might be into the 100 acre wood action, though. Uh, by the way, uh, Christopher was wanting me to ask you, uh, Drizzle, do, do you have any contact yes, information for Johnny Cochran? Uh, do not. No. Isn't he dead? Oh. Yeah, I think he died oh, a couple that, years ago. How he might breaks. have died of Coof. Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. He might have. I'm going to break this to Pooh Bear. Oh, geez. Xi Jinping is going to be so disappointed. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking. Oh, I didn't just do that. <laughs> I know we're going to get banned in China now. Thanks, man. Oh, awesome. no, I'm sorry, Driz. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. We love the PRC here at Grand Theft World. Much the shadow love, banned homie. pirate radio on the planet. I swear to God, y'all don't even know. Oh, by the way, for folks who don't know, uh, our, uh, our Twitter account got suspended again uh, <laughs> last night. Um, Almost exactly 24 hours ago. Been about uh, 23 hours and change. I wonder why I hadn't seen your tweets in my feed. Yeah. It's happened again. It's well, happened again. I just want to apologize, Drizzle. You know, I remember when I there think was I stepped on a hornet's nest. There, there were some irresponsible NBA basketball players in China that made some unscrupulous comments about the wonderful People's Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party, which led to uh, 
some serious issues for the marketing uh, wizards at the NBA. Mm -hmm. uh, and I certainly don't want that to happen to Grand Theft World's broadcasting privileges all across the, did I say beautiful, beautiful and benevolent People's Republic of China. Uh, yes. And uh, for the record, Xi Jinping mm -hmm. does not like honey. Okay, moving on. Yeah. So uh, in the chat, because uh, Ashley uh, from the Union of the Unknowns, Think Change Repeat, is hanging out on the broadcast tonight, and she is curious what the violation was that got the Liberty Radio account suspended. Do, do you think I should let everybody know? Like, is, is that something that should become public knowledge? Because I haven't made it public knowledge. Hmm... Because there's mm. the, the reason why is there's a series of events that led up to the account getting suspended. And I'm not fully convinced that the tweet that the algorithm highlighted uh, and suspended the account for seven days for was actually what got the account suspended. <laughs> if you follow uh, what I'm laying down. Well, there there seems to be a point at which once you become the target mm -hmm. that they have locked upon, then they just find a way Anything. Yeah. to get rid of you. Uh -huh. uh, and it doesn't even have to be legitimate. It can even be for a generally an innocuous tweet. But I thought you've already innocuous. violated, and so it's time to yeet your fucking ass. So they just find a way to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it now called Twixter? I call it X Twitter. X Twitter. Cause, yeah, because on on the app it it says X. Like if you look at it on your phone, you got the little right. tile there on your phone. It says X. You open it up, and and up in the the top left corner, they have the logo there. It's an X. And even on the web page, when you pull up the web page up there in the top left corner, they got the logo. It's a little X, right? Yeah. And you know, uh, I, I'm a big well, fan. But of no, I'm not done. I'm not done. Cause there's, there's even more aspects to running a digital enterprise such as Twitter. For example, if you look at the web page, like, cause I have the two Twitter accounts, right? So I actually open up one in brave and I open up the other one in Chrome. If I look at the address in uh, the address bar at the top of the browser window, it still says twitter.com. If, if I look at that little button at the very top of the feed that when new tweets come out, they, they want you to click on that button so that you can get to the new stuff, right? The, the whole uh, uh, operant conditioning bullshit, right? right. Uh, that still says show new tweets. So there is still Twitter life left in the enterprise that apparently Elon hasn't figured out how to how to. Uh, transmutate yet so it's it's x twitter but you know there's still some of that left in there because um i think that's called the uh the the yuccarino phenomenon the yuccarino effect the the yuccarino effect the, the the more you try to purge the the ticks from the back of the dog the more they just cluster around the still bleeding sores uh, right near the anus. That makes sense. It really does. Uh, and, you know, if you're a redneck like biological like me, and shit. you just get a little, uh, you get an old bean can, put a little bit of turpentine down at the bottom of it, you throw all the ticks in there, and then you light the can of turpentine, and, and it pops for about two or three minutes while you're smoking um, crack. Anyways. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I did that when I was at Harper's Ferry the last time hanging out with Beanie Boy Tim Poole, who's also in West Virginia, but you, on the you other smoke, end of the state, Harper's you, Ferry. You smoke crack with Tim Poole? Allegedly. Well, well, not with him. It, it was just in the front yard. It, it was in somebody else's camper, and I'm not going to say who it was because I protect the innocent and the exacerbating. <laughs> All right, so uh, so should I let people know what the tweet was that uh, that got the account yeeted? 
That's that's the ultimate question here. Should we make it public knowledge or should we keep it classified? Um, have you checked with our legal counsel? Um, we have a legal counsel. I thought was that the damn bot again? And what what's going on with that that bot in your system there? Because sometimes I'll get a message from you, and I'm like, this does not sound like the the double J that I know. This this is not drizzle like. It it seems very mechanical and very. And then I realized, God damn it, I'm getting deep fake again. This uh, fucking GPT shit's getting out of control. Yeah, it gets out of containment sometimes. Because, I, you know, w- one of the videos we'll be putting out here eventually, um, I actually confronted the chat bot during one of my uh, uh, videos there because I thought I was talking to you. Mm. And, and so I had to do a trick question on the chat bot. And sure enough, I was able to authenticate and it did not pass the CAPTCHA. It did not pass the CAPTCHA. That, that, that's why we have CAPTCHA. Yeah, but even even now, uh, I don't I don't think the they've changed it. Have you noticed how the CAPTCHA has changed? Mm-hmm. It's become more difficult. Like I didn't think it was possible. I really didn't. But they like instead of doing the thing where like pick all the squares that have bikes in them, and like one of them's like a long shot of like a parking lot like fuck yeah they're not doing that anymore but they're embedding images in other images and being like pick the the thing where the the two embedded images are the same so they're getting more sophisticated with that stuff that has to mean that the the algorithms are starting to get more sophisticated in terms of what they are capable of recognizing and you know, the best part about artificial intelligence is the artificial part because, you know, you can just keep making more fake shit. And, um, you know, I'd like to think when it comes to artificial intelligence, just fake it till you break it. There you go. Yeah. Fake it till you speaking, break it. Speaking of fake it till you break it, uh, keep talking because <laughs> I'm out of water. <laughs> so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So, uh, What's really exciting now is uh, working on all these musical collaborations with other artists. And even though we're separated by so much distance, you know, for example, of course, I'm working with Dead Fella over in um, the far, far east there. He's over in uh, Bangladesh and working with Dr. Dennis, and he's over there and the United Kingdom, England, and and we're so far flung, but thanks to uh, technology and the interwebs, we're able to record our different parts and and make music together. And, and so you've heard some of the recent things that I've done with Recycle Bin Laden and mm-hmm. Dr. Kingsley Dennis and Dead Fella and B1 and others. Um, and what's really interesting is Um, we're not in the same studio. We're not even having like group discussions about the music. We're just submitting our different parts via MP3 or WAV file. And then it's all coming together. And what is just so amazing to me is the fact that all of us collectively are like on the same vibration. We're all on, we're all literally in the same mental place, the same place in the heart, the same place in the soul of feeling to where it's just immediately, immediately collating together like a really fancy copy machine that separates and makes books. You know, you can put a book in and and then it's got five books forming out of the bottom of it. Um, And so, for example, there was a song that I did with, um, well, we haven't actually put it together. There, there's two that I've worked on so far with Dr. Dennis, Dead Fella, and RBL. Oh, One wow. of them has already uh, gone out, 
And that one was called, um, that's the Mr. T song, Pity the Fool. I Pity the Fool, which you've already played. Yeah. I Pity the Fool. I don't remember um, Kingsley being on that, though. Uh, yeah, he, he ended up, uh, RBL ended up doing the vocals on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that actually started out as a, a, a super duper. The other super duper oh, wow. is still in the works. Um, but it's just amazing to me. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably the greatest joy that I get out of working with uh, Grand Theft World and our Grand Theft World Liberty Radio fam in general is the fact that so many of us are now in the same intellectual space we're in the same place uh when it comes to awareness of uh the overall fuck shit going on um not necessarily all agreeing on what caused it or where it's going but at least we all have a genuine uh, a general common acknowledgement of the situation at hand, even if we amongst ourselves may have individual differing theories as to where this came from or where it's going, at least we all generally can agree shit is fucked up. And, and these are the things that are fucked up. We may disagree upon what fucked them up and what, what further areas of fucking up it will lead to. But at least we're all generally on the same page when it comes to acknowledging shit's fucked up and what exactly is fucked up. Um, and, you know, to be more specific, um, it really comes down to the ability to rise above the false two-party dichotomy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, that's what really distinguishes independent media at this point when looking across the great media scape because for most people mainstream lamestream media is a non sequitur it's it's a non-starter i mean and nobody i mean even, even if you're stuck in the fucking airport on a 45 minute or a two hour layover and the only thing on the screens is cnn Luckily, you'll have your phone or, or iPod, something to, to tune that shit out with. But uh, we, we've gotten to the point now to where most people are getting their media from independent sources Correct. or non-mainstream. And, of course, amongst the non-mainstream, you can run the gamut from Rachel Madcow at MSNBC. Which, no, that's mainstream. No, mm -hmm. you got to go independent. So... So let's go into the independent, like Tim Truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to watch him pretty closely, and it's getting some different flavors of um, uh, kind of like a libertarian type space, but a little bit clownish. But I like Tim Truth because at least he's able to do the stuff with the balloons where he can fold them into animals. Like mm. like birthday party tricks, um, but uh, it's kind of kind of a head scratcher, kind of a head scratcher. Same thing with like um, what's another one? Stu Peters, Stu Peters, Don't and get and, me started you know, on Stu Peters. Ben. Some of that stuff over there, you know, it's like there there will be some of that stuff little, over there. There there'll be a few things that are true, but then everything else is like. Wait a second. Well, what is that with snake it's, venom? It's again? no different. Snake it's no venom. different than tin oh, cast, man. Snake venom. Not again. You it's know, all I mean, tabloid journalism. Yeah, it's like Bat Boy on National Enquirer. You know, the, exactly the, like that. Um, you know, there used to be snake oil salesmen, mm -hmm. right? And now we've got snake oil vaccine salesmen. Mm -hmm. oh, it, 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 it's the um, it's the snake venom in the shots that's making you grow fangs, you see. And, and so, you know, it's, it, it's disappointing to see how these different little pockets of independent media communities, which are, for all better, 
I don't know how else to explain it other than like social media silos, like big grain silos. And that way you can keep everyone separate mm -hmm. in their own little echo chamber where they can all agree with each other that it's totally fucking snake venom in the shots that's making you grow fangs. Meanwhile, have you ever seen anybody actually growing fangs? Like, think about it for a second. But anyways, it, 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 to me, I think I, in one of our previous interviews, I had talked about this fact that, you know, not everyone comes to these levels of awareness at the same rate of speed. And what some of us have figured out, others of our friends and family have not yet figured out. And so you try to be patient. You try to be kind and loving. You don't get to pick and choose your brothers and sisters and parents. So you just have to love them the way they are and be accepting. And you hope and eventually they'll start to figure shit out. And granted, people have kind of come along. But there's more and more people figuring it out. And some of them are like, you know, I was the worst shit lib. And I know I said all these things that were terrible. But can you just forgive me for all that? And let's just. Let bygones be bygones and move on. So that's been part of the national conversation of, of recent, you know, a little bit of reconciliation and forgiveness and stuff uh, so. as people are coming along. Um, but, you know, I mean, you can forgive, but I don't know about forgetting. I, I, I can be a forgiving person, but I'm not a forgetful person. I'm sorry. What was I talking about? So anyways, we've now reached the point of complete madness where so much of the mm -hmm. independent media space is in fact not independent, but being led by the nose by the same narrative management that brought you cold, hard babies on the hard, I mean, incubator, incubator babies on the mm -hmm. cold, hard hospital floor you know, Knowlton and Hughes and, and, and just more of the mind fuck of America while they try to legitimize their own criminal activity to their captive population. Because make no doubt about it, the American population is a captive population. Americans make up about 4% of Earth's global population about one out of 25 human beings on earth is an american citizen citizen more than half of all the human beings on earth currently in jail on home incarceration or on monitoring you know parole probation um more than half of all the human beings under those conditions of permanent or temporary jailing are American citizens. Yep. So how does 4% of the world's population account for more than half of the world's prison population? Ooh, well, I, that know, I know the answer. I know the answer to that one. The freest country in the world. No, it's because he wrote the damn bill. Bingo. Yep. That's my favorite line from that whole song that I wrote. Um, I recorded three songs coming straight out of jail. As soon as I got home, first song I recorded was. Um, second song was Concrete Box. And the third song was um, uh, the Tupac song. I, I, I made a brand new Tupac song called um, Until the End of Time Served. Did you play that one last night? Yes, at, at the, the very beginning end. of the show. Or yeah, it, 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 I, I led the I led the, that was the the song at the very top of the show. Okay, yeah, yeah. I did hear that one then. Um, yeah, uh, brand new Tupac song from the Yona, <clears throat> featuring the Supermax Prison in Florence, Colorado. Where uh, that little boy that grew up at Rancho Tuna, outside of beautiful Culiacan in the Sinaloa state of Mexico, 
uh, the one and only Joaquin Guzman Loera, or as we affectionately know him, El Chapo, um, is currently still lodged at the Florence, Colorado Supermax and is featured in that video in a couple of spots there. Um, shout out El Chapo. Um, que pasa, amigo? I'm surprised he hasn't gotten out yet. Oh, it's definitely still him in there and not a body double. Oh, yeah. Remember that time when the um, the when the gringos and the DEA convinced oh, really the Mexican so authorities to go into the El Chapo compound in Calia Khan to capture El Chapito? That would be baby chapo um yeah yeah and uh they actually got him into custody and had him in custody for about three or four minutes until they realized that they were completely fucking surrounded by narcos on motorbikes with machine guns and then it went terribly bad turns out there was a shootout and um mm. well um they did not end up taking el chapito into custody and they suffered many deaths mm. Didn't go as planned. No, it rarely does in uh, in that business. That's uh, that's part of the occupational hazard uh, of working in that industry. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, I'm just hoping that the DEA was able to maintain their uh, supply chain to keep selling drugs in America, so they can continue to. Uh, you know, finance their operations with mm -hmm. that um, unaccountable uh, revenue stream that they continue to not account for. Shout out Rick Ross, Freeway. Shout out Freeway Rick Ross. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, just shout out Rick Ross for no reason at all. <laughs> shout out Rick Ross because uh, he exists. Freeway Rick. Every day I'm hustling. Every right. day I'm hustling. Hustling, hustling, hustling. Yeah, that's right. All right. That's speaking, right. Oh, speaking, speaking of, of uh, Tijuana, I, I, I almost forgot. I didn't mean to interrupt, but <laughs> Tijuana was just hit by Hillary. Yeah. Hurricane Hillary, which just went yeah, past. Yeah. Oh, well, no. just before you came on, we were uh, watching that video that you sent to me a couple days ago of the, uh, uh, the floodwaters there in uh, Coachella. Mm -hmm. Great place for concert. Not anymore. It's a little muddy. It's a little muddy. Just wear galoshes. You'll be fine. Walk on top of the driftwood that was left behind. Nothing like a burn scar, Driz. Nothing like a burn mm -hmm. scar. But before we get too much deeper into this, uh, and we do have a hard out uh, at midnight, by the way, uh, where can, uh, I'm not saying you have to stay on until midnight, uh, but we're already an hour into this one. Uh, so before we get any deeper, where can people hook up with your work? And of course, we'll drop those links in the notes right. when this so releases. The main place to find Yonage uh, would be Grounded History at manufacturingreality.org. Uh, and you just go into our main website there at Grand Theft World Liberty Radio and you look at the top and pull down menu under flavors and you will see grounded history where uh you know ju just like uh earthworms and night crawlers there is the yona right there threading through the grassroots that's right threading through the grassroots like a night crawler is the yona uh and then also uh for the yona music for those that are musically inclined Go to H I G H Y O N A, that's Hyona dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, and uh, right behind the uh, overflow parking lot where only juniors and seniors get to park, you know, the upperclassmen part of the high school parking lot, where we do our band camp thing during the summertime before high school actually starts back. Um, that's where you'll find the Yona stuff for free, where the woodwinds are doing that sexual stuff with the color guard again, because it's band camp, it's band camp. Stores. They're teenagers and they're experimenting. Yeah, we know. 
I mean, we've all been there. They're woodwinds, Drizzle. They're licking pieces of wood, sucking on saxophone and clarinet penises while they march. Oh, and then uh, don't don't forget the the what is it? The flautists, the the ones who like to blow. Yeah, yeah. They blow well, though. They blow well. It's uh. It, some people have a talent for it. Other people have to acquire it as a skill from what I understand. That's right. You know, they actually make I a played wood- trumpet, so I was using a completely different muscle. Ladies, pay attention to that one. And, and for just for full disclosure, the Yona was a trumpet player in marching band mm-hmm. for um, six years. Then even did a little stint in something called DCI, which is uh, short for Drum Corps International. At which point, I put down the old B-flat cornet, picked up what's called a soprano, a soprano horn. It's just a trumpet. Trumpet, cornet, you know. Technically, there's a difference between trumpet and cornet, but, you know, uh, it depends on what they're tuned as well. Because, you know, not all instruments are tuned to the same note, but... The important thing to remember is blow your own horn. Blow your own horn. And if you can't get someone to blow it for you, shout out Lennon Moreno and Christian Lagarde. Anyways. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. why are we shouting out the, uh, the head of the European Central Bank? Because thanks to the IMF, Latin America has a vibrant economy today. The IMF would be the International Monetary Fund. But they just had uh, presidential candidates assassinated in, where is it, Argentina? Last week, Ecuador. within the last week. Two of Ecuador. them. Ecuador. Ecuador, too. What? Oh, Ecuador, too, huh? Wow. Turns out yeah. the pink revolution, uh, well, it was kind of a red revolution, but then it was a pink revolution. Mm-hmm. And now it's more of like a brown revolution because the blood has dried around the wound. It's it's dried around the wound. And although Ecuador is no longer really using their 2007 constitution, on the plus side, they now have six U.S. military bases in Ecuador. Take that, Rafael Correa. (laughs) And, And fortunately, thanks to those new U.S. military bases in Ecuador, the DEA is now fully able to completely manage drug trafficking in Ecuador and and stop any competition from competing with them. Oh, finally. They've been working on that a while. And, uh, you know, there's one other thing in Ecuador, and that is um, Stephen Donziger represented the Shuar tribe uh, against Chevron, who uh, totally fucked up part of the Orellana province of Ecuador with their uh, uh, environmental destruction and, you know, open cesspools of oil just left all over the jungle and everything. And uh, Stephen Donziger was actually able to get a, uh, get a ruling against Chevron. Uh, but guess what? Stephen Donziger didn't count on Chevron Owning that fucking judge in New York, did you, buddy? <laughs> mm-hmm. How'd you like that year and a half of home incarceration for? I'm not even sure what the hell. How the fuck did they make that happen? But what, nonetheless, what um, they got the ruling by the judge against Chevron to pay Ecuador for environmental damages. They got that ruling suspended and then managed to get Stephen Donziger arrested and jailed in New York for, um, I'm still not sure how the fuck they pulled that off. Hmm. But Stephen Donziger was the lead attorney and counsel for the Shuar tribe of Ecuador that had their shit totally fucked up by Chevron, which was originally Unicol, you know, the California subsidiary Mm -hmm. of Standard Oil Company. Um, And I I want to apologize to all those that have been reading the Rockefeller deep dive that Yona was writing up until a few weeks ago. Um, uh, And and that's because 
I had planned to keep writing an article every week, week after week after week. And there's been a hiatus of about a month or more where I've not written any more of the installments and, and I'm, I've got it to write. I've just been absolutely overwhelmed with trying to catch up on bills and just out there grinding and working. And I've just not had the extra time to sit down and write because it takes time to write. Um, but I am getting back to that this week. I actually earlier today started writing on the Rockefeller thing again. So I just wanted to get oh, that nice. in. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna finish what I started there. I've just got so many irons in the fire, and I've really been doing a tremendous amount of uh recording and, and music here lately, which has just completely overtaken my journalism stuff. Um but, uh, of course, we've got a lot more um, agent stories and a lot more footage that we're going through out there for, for those that, that love that stuff that, uh, that uh, I film and then drizzle edits and, and perfectly packages together. Um, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in there. So things to look forward to to the future. Moving forward, we've got the Rockefeller article that I'm going to finish up here. Um, it's like you're reading my mind, Ben. Because the next question that I was going to ask you is, what is the next thing that we can look forward to from the Hyona? And you just answered that question before I even had a chance to ask it, which is just absolutely incredible. <laughs> We're gonna uh, stop the recording here for you know the publishing and the post production and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go anywhere, Yona. So uh, last words for the folks who are going to be listening to this later. What is the most important thing that you have to say right now? Well, that is to go with your gut. Trust your instinct. Um, more and more, we continue to be bombarded with messages Uh infantilizing your own intellect discounting your own intuition uh, ignore all of that i mean the the thing that i enjoy the most about grand theft world in general uh is the care concern and respect that we have as broadcasters uh for our audience and that we don't infantilize our audience we don't talk down to our audience. Um, and I think that's what distinguishes Grand Theft World from some other independent media spaces uh, in that uh, we respect our audience uh, to be able to put these things together. Uh, and it's overall a sort of a forensic approach and providing, providing you with all the reference materials citations, reading materials, um, you know, like Richard Grove's brain maps showing how these things are interconnected. Um, of course, uh, you know, what, what I like about Drizzle's approach with Liberty Radio is how we're able to bring into this sphere the incredible underground music scene that is also amplifying these uh, important concepts of awareness that all of us are, are now able to see and appreciate. Again, we may not all agree upon the current situation or the causes or where it's going, but it's about the awareness and the respect for one another to be able to have an adult conversation about these things and not sink to shit library or the other, the other flavors of following instead of leading. Because I like to think that our group in general is autonomy focused and leadership focused. And that it, it's, it's kind of cool when we all get together on town halls and forums and other things, because it's a whole room full of leaders rather than a whole room full of followers trying to figure out who do we follow blindly next. 
we're all thinking for ourselves and we're all doing for ourselves and doing for each other. That's what characterizes the strength of our online community here. And, and I just see Grand Theft World continuing to grow and grow and grow because it's not really about an ideology. It's about, I think it has so much more to do about personal growth and internal growth because we're all trying to continue to become more adult. We're all maturing together in our understanding of how to improve our collective situation. It begins with awareness and recognizing the problems, but we've moved far beyond that. And we generally are constantly talking about solutions and what is already working in combating that, which, which is just levels beyond what so many of the other media organizations focus mm -hmm. on, which is more of the tabloid nature and just spin the wheels and doesn't this get you to grind your gears? And, and instead we're like, hey, this is actually working and this is how we're already kicking ass. Try doing this. And, and so, you know, I keep getting... <laughs> I keep losing channels. The last thing I would say uh, with my interview this time is I finally broke down, started a fourth YouTube channel, and now I'm building a fourth YouTube channel. If you want to go over and subscribe to <sighs> DJ Hyona at you YouTube, um, which the link's down there, you can go and become the 23rd or 24th subscriber to my YouTube channel. But uh, amazingly, the first song that I recorded coming out of jail <laughs> or fart noise, um, I put that thing up on YouTube. At the time, I had 19 subscribers. And within 10 hours, it had over 800 views. I saw that. And so I'm going to say that's the first bona fide viral Yona song that, that's ever hit the airwaves. Um, and I think of all the other uh, intellectual songs I've put together. And, you know, I, I, at first blush, I thought this is the stupidest, dumbest, silliest song I've ever made. What the fuck was I thinking? But, you know, after listening to it about a thousand times now, it's it's a real earworm. It really it's a real earworm. Mm -hmm. And I realize that it that's a truth song. Mm -hmm. That is a truth song because everything in it is true. Everything in that song is based upon true and actual real events. Mm -hmm. and, and it's good to remind yourself that there is an incompetent, raping, racist pedophile of a piece of shit that is our allegedly our country's most popularly elected president in all of recorded history right there you go ladies and gentlemen once again for the third time and the first <laughs> guest to appear for a third liberty radio interview that is indeed a record the man, the myth, the legend himself, the DJ, Hi Yona. I don't know. Uh, it's it's probably going to be a little difficult uh, to top this one with the next Liberty Radio interview, but uh, we we are going to try. So uh, everyone in the audience is just going to have to tune in for that whenever it takes place, and we'll see you then. Just keep an eye out, folks, as you're following the election. Don't get distracted by fucker or booby. Listen to Sheba. All right. I've stopped the recording. But like I say, we can we can <laughs> keep chatting because uh, I believe there's still folks watching. Not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure. Uh, yeah, it's just nice oh, people I... watching. So uh, we're good. You got to love Dr. Shiva, man. You got to love Dr. I call Shiva. him I call him Dr. Fuck. Yeah. I've yeah. I've never heard a grown professional man 
say the word fuck with the frequency that that he employs the word. It is I love it. It's astounding. I love it. It's kind of hypnotic in a way. It really is. Like you almost like the other words just kind of almost start to melt away and all you just hear is fuck 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 fuck. But fuck it makes him authentic drizzle. It makes Shiva authentically Massachusetts. I suppose. I don't know. Is that a word, Massachusetts? Massachusetts? I don't know. I mean, they, they changed the definition of whatever the fuck they want to change anyway. So, I mean, do we really have words anymore? Well, you know. In this post truth world? Actually, marijuana cigarettes mm-hmm. are now classified as a type of vaccine. How so? Because it doesn't contain an attenuated virus, it does not prevent transmission, and it does not uh, uh, prevent infection. In fact, a marijuana cigarette is also a vaccine. See how that works? You can smoke a joint, you'll still get infected, you can still give it to somebody else. That joint's a vaccine. Think about it. Well, in many ways it is. Just look at the new and improved fourth definition for vaccine, and you'll see cannabis is under there. It is. Oh, and by the way, speaking of which, have you heard the exciting news drizzle? What's that? School districts, college campuses, masks are back, baby. Oh, fuck all that we're, 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 we're bringing back the fucking back no, mandates. And, no. Uh, Los mm-hmm. Angeles Unified School District is nope. saying, hey, you non-vax kids, stay the fuck off of our public school campuses. And let, uh, are, are we going to do the lockdown again? I'm so excited. Nope. nope. Not doing that shit again. Nope. Didn't enjoy it the first time. I, I don't want to do it again. You know, it's it's like the, you remember when you were younger, Yona, back in your 20s and you'd have a one night stand and the next morning you were like what the fuck was i even thinking with that right like like that was that was the first lockdown right that was that was your one night stand with authoritarianism y'all really want to go through this shit again really you know you would have thought i would have learned my lesson the first time and then later that month Got another 30 cube of Milwaukee best ice. <laughs> and then it happened again, two o'clock at the bar and the bartender says last call for alcohol. Mm-hmm. You gotta let, you know, you don't, you don't have to go home, but you can't fucking stay here. Mm-hmm. And then the second time I wake up and I'm like, damn it. I did it again. Mm-hmm. Damn it. I did it again. I was so desperate for acceptance and love. And now here I am wearing a fucking mask again and complying. Well, all right. So let's let's think about this. All right. Let's <laughs> let's break it down. Let's break it down. All right. Today is August twenty fourth. All right. We are still <clears throat> technically in summer. All right. Autumn is not going to start for another full month. All right. So the the traditional season when human beings get sick in the northern hemisphere is not due to start for like another two months, all right? What is that? Oh boy, child abduction, Amber Alert. Missing person, 11 month male, blonde hair, blue eyes, missing from Clay County. Oh, all right. Believed to have been taken by non-custodial parents, Sarah Brumley and Dustin Gibson. Parents were last known to have been driving a Lincoln MKZ white in color, Approximately a 2010 model. Okay, Clay County. Oh, this is West Virginia. Yeah. Well, All right, so it's an like Amber that, Alert. John Denver. Okay, I thought maybe like World War Three was starting or something. I didn't want to make make sure it wasn't anything serious that we needed to uh, let the folks know on well, the air. Just remember, anyway. Drizzle, if there is not a nuclear attack coming to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. The sirens will be going off in Lahaina. 
Sure, of course they will. If there is a wildfire descending upon Lahaina, there will be no Simon. Okay. Anyway, so the point I was making is we're still in the time of year where humans are not typically getting sick from transmissible respiratory illnesses, right? And they are, we're, we're like a long way from that time of the year, all right? And they're starting to do this stuff now where they're saying you can't come to school if you're not wearing a mask or you're not vaccinated or whatever the, whatever the fuck it is that they're trying to get away with now. I don't think they're serious with it. I think they're testing the waters. Mm-hmm. I, think oh, they, yeah. I think they want to know what the response would be, but they don't want to go all the way just yet. Yeah. Great way to put it. They're, 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 these are just toes back in the water to mm-hmm. see if we can do splishy, splashy, floaty yeah. time again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely testing the waters. And and furthermore, you know, here, well, here's the other it, thing it's hard too. to figure out what's going on because we are in the middle of the classical summer flu season. Right. Um, so <laughs> it, this this stuff like with the with the schools and the businesses and and stuff happens just a couple of days literally after the Alex Jones what is it Department of Homeland Security whistleblower saying the Biden administration is going to reinstitute covid protocols in October and and then this shit starts getting sprinkled in uh I'm sorry I'm sorry folks looks like programming it looks like programming. Because yep. it's just, it's too close together. It's absolutely too close together. They're, they're, yeah. they're trying to provoke people. <laughs> what, what's, what's also being tested, the other toes being stuck in the water that I'm hearing again, I've heard it on three different shows now, Ramping up this, uh, I, I'm going to call it a, a canard, mm-hmm. like the French word for duck. It, it's a bit of a canard. What they're they 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 keep trying to roll out this impending American civil war, and that you know, granted, it has little morsels of truth in it. Like when you say, "Well, the country is so divided." Uh huh, and and this and that. Uh huh, uh huh, and that's why we're all about to take up arms against each other, blue and the gray. We're gonna have a civil war again, and I'm like, ah, ah, no, 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 no. Narrative fail, narrative fail. But they're trying, they're trying, and and again, you know, I see both of these as failed narratives, mm-hmm. convincing me that summer flu season is actually a thing. It's not, never has been. Um, or convincing me that all these Americans that have ergonomically formed gamer chairs are going to put down their wireless gaming console and actually learn how to use CLP and actually maintain and properly zero um, a uh, stick. We'll just call it a stick. And that they're going to put down a video console and pick up sticks and jump in trenches and get all like civil war with each other. Nah. No. Yeah, I don't see that happening. No. Nah. No. Narrative fail. Anyway, moving on. Page three, Paul Harvey. <laughs> and why did Discord get rid of T-Laugh? Why? Because, dude, I know you know why. Never mind. I I already answered my own question. It was because of their violent words. (laughs) No, it was because it's T-Lav. It's because Ryan cites his work to the nth degree. And they've told him that. They've told him as much. Right? They're like, if you didn't have all of these sources along with what you were saying, you wouldn't get censored. They have literally told him that. And he's just like, yeah, fuck you. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it the way I want to do it. And That's so the common thread. censored. 
that is the common thread between uh, James Corbett, James Evan Pilato, mm -hmm. Ryan Christian, shout out Puerto Rico, Grand Theft World, you know, uh, LD and Tony and Richard and Drizzle and the Yona and all the rest of us. We are like the Hansel and Gretel of the independent media space in that we don't just tell you about the crazy old woman in the forest that cooks children in her, in her stove. We've left the crumb trail mm -hmm. all the way to that fucking stove with all the associated websites and links and books and ISBN numbers. And watch out for this quicksand over here. So that any and all who want to deep dive and, and read this material themselves, you know, get into the Ficta, read the Spinoza. Don't yeah, be a I, taunt. I'm suffering read it through yourself. Adorno right now. I cannot believe how long it is taking me to read a 200 page book. It is excruciating. It is so bad. Because some of these concepts, some of these writings, like, I, I remember the first time I was reading John Locke with the E, L O C K E, John Locke. I literally read that book like 20 times and still I just, I ended up having to literally break it down sentence by sentence, word by word, because it, it's so profound. You know, sometimes it can be so simple. This that is it's not complex. that. <laughs> this is not that at all. This is this when it is, comes to this is Frankfurt the, the, School, man. Ugh. When it comes to the the citations mm -hmm. and and you know enabling access to the intellectual references that any free thinking human being would need in order to become more knowledgeable and informed about this particular subject area, whatever it may be, it's it has to do with links and citations because we are empowering each other with more access to more information and resources in a day and age of unprecedented restriction of academic information. Shout out Aaron Schwartz and fucking JSTOR. I mean, we've been way that he, he's been dead for quite some time. Rest in peace, Aaron. We love you, buddy. You know, trying to make information <laughs> accessible to more people with originally a, one of these internet concepts, you know, and instead it's been turned upon its head uh, as they've created this whole new industry woven from whole cloth called the, the disinformation industry, where they've got their own new fake experts and their new fake field of science. It's, it's the phrenology of our day, finding misinformation, which what they're saying is, how do we prevent anyone from combating our lies? How can we further vilify and restrict the conveyance of truth? It's, it's classical sophistry, right? Anything but the truth, anything but the truth. Which and so not only do we tell the truth, Grand Theft World has to exist. That, I mean, that, I, you know, I, I didn't mean to cut in on you. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm echoing what you're saying. Not only are we telling the truth, which aggravates them to no end, mm -hmm. hence your latest seven day suspension from X Twitter, but it's the Hansel and Gretel approach of journalism. Where as we're making our way through time, we continue to leave these geocaches replete with truth bombs and references just left and right. And we're putting signs next to the quicksand pits. Hey, 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 hey. I know you like that Richmond song, but look into that fucker just a little bit more closely and pay attention to his diversity speech. You know, I mean... Uh, and and so it's like, I almost feel like we're, it's the concept of Ubuntu. You know, if you want to get there quickly, just run ahead by yourself. Or we can all get to, 
we can all get there together. But it's going to be at a more methodical pace. But we're all going to get there together. And I feel like that's what Grand Theft World is as a community in, 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 the, in the macro vision. You know, the, the macro view of Grand Theft World is we're all getting there together, labeling the quicksand pits, leaving the citations. And of course, um, check down in the show notes, folks, there, and you'll see all the links to Grand Theft World, to the autonomy community for those um, that uh, are ready to take the next step. There's a number of courses and classes and other references that are available with a number of other uh, great minds and actors on there as well. You know, it's, it, it, this is not just a Richard Grove show when you go over to autonomy and Agora and other things like that. The whole point is about giving you access to the resources and tools and toolboxes so that you can facilitate and continue to improve your own skill set as we all work together towards getting all of us down this trail, looking out for one another, giving each other tips. And, and what I like the most about this community is the adult respect that we have for one another and that we're still able to carry on this national conversation that's so necessary to the function of an actual society and a civilization. Um, you know, I, I'm not as dire in my prognosis as uh, Carol Quigley in the Tragedy and Hope remix that I made, you know, where he keeps saying, you know, I, I, I think we're just screwed we're just fucked. I used to have hope, but now I think, you know, you know, it looks like civilization is just going to go completely down the drain and we're fucked. I think we're just about finished. <laughs> like, you know, and, and, and then, you know, factor in the Sudanese and they keep saying Darfur, Darfur, but um, you know, that song and, and that view of Carol Quigley is a view shared by many academics. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're high-fiving each other from the ivory towers as they continue to accelerate the de-intellectualization de of America. Uh, for, for folks playing Scrabble tonight, de-intellectualization is Yona's Scrabble word of the night. Uh, that's a fancier way of saying dumb and down. Uh, anyway. Will that even fit on the playing board? Diagonally. You have to play diagonally. Holy shit. What it's kind called of Scrabble, Scrabble are you playing? Jesus Christ. 3D man. Scrabble, buddy. <laughs> 3D Scrabble. Fuck your chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I hope somebody was recording that because I wasn't. <laughs> aren't you, get aren't on you guys nights, glad you folks. stayed up for, for this last little bit? <laughs> These last little juicy morsels, kibbles uh, and bits. Hey, it's it's only coming up on uh, ten o'clock here in Acapulco. Like I, the the compound was bumping earlier this evening when I went on the air three hours ago. I don't think they're still bumping now. I haven't heard them in a while. I think we had some thunder from some storms that are passing by. Hopefully, they don't uh, do anything to the power because that would suck. <coughs> we would go down off the air. If the power goes out, um, you know, I have one last thing to share, and that is, um, even in my old age, Wait I, a minute. I find how old myself, are you? How old are you? Oh, I just what year celebrated were you born? a birthday. Just celebrated a birthday on July twenty eighth, almost a month ago. I'm now Dear Leah. less than a year away from fifty years old now. Forty nine years and one month old. I'm older than you. Almost 50. I was born July 5th, 1974. Yeah, you got me beat by three weeks. God damn it. You're not but old, motherfucker. Fair, I, I, I was born in Virginia, though. So was I. Damn it. <laughs> so, well, then that makes you an older Dominion than me. Correct. So, Yona is old Dominion. 
Fuck. Drizzle is an older Dominion. The, the kind that holds tiki torches in Charlottesville. All right, I'm looking at the list of songs that will get added to the vault this week because the song that just popped into my head is from one of my favorite bands. How many, how many favorite bands does this asshole have anyway? I have a lot of favorite bands, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but one of my favorite bands is from just over the Virginia border in Maryland. That is, of course, Clutch. And they did a song, I'm trying to remember the album that it's on. I should know this right off the top of my head, but I don't. Uh, but the song is called Son of Virginia. And I think yeah. that needs to go Clutch, in Son the of Virginia. Vault. No, that song will. And, and for those that are confused, a Maryland Terrapin? Terrapin is an alternate spelling of twerp. It's a type of turtle. If you've ever been to PG County or Gaithersburg or anywhere around there, you'll be well familiar with the Maryland twerps. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out 495 Capital Beltway. Woo -woo. <laughs> oh, Come on down to Tyson's Corner. The shopping's great. And you, you, you can take the no silver line. No idea uh, how happy I am to not deal with that shit anymore. I'm so happy to be so far away from all of that. I'm really glad that my parents moved back to Kentucky and that I did not grow up going to school in Reston, Virginia. Oh, Jesus. With a bunch of fucking FBI and CIA agent kids. No, Winchester was bad enough. <laughs> Seriously, it was pretty oh. bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Virginia is just... Virginia's fucked, dude. Oh Virginia is and, seriously fucked. And then there, there's Virginia, and it's so bad in Virginia that people in Virginia refer to the other part as, with slight eye roll, oh, Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk to anyone in Virginia, and when, yep. when they go to say the words Northern Virginia, note the eye roll. Right before Lynchburg comes off the tongue. It's bad. It's it's really bad. I mean, you know, Dulles used to just be an airstrip in the middle of fucking no 